Hey there, welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, I want to take a look at the relationship between the frequency response of open loop op amps and the frequency response of closed loop op amps like this inverting amplifier right here. I should note that in this video, I am only going to be looking at the magnitude part of the frequency response, not the phase. Op amps are typically designed to be single pole dominant, and that means they have a single pole over most, if not all of the bandwidth of the op amp. In a circuit, a pole can come from an inductor or a capacitor in the circuit and contributes to the frequency response of the circuit. And op amps don't have notable inductance to deal with, but they do have dominant capacitance. For example, in this LM741 op amp, this 30 picofarad capacitor right there creates the dominant pole. There are other poles that are usually due to straight capacitances, but we can usually ignore those because they are at much higher frequencies than the dominant pole. The most basic circuit with a pole is a low pass filter like this. And just to remind you what the relationship between output voltage and input voltage for this simple circuit is, let's go through that derivation. So that resistance has an impedance of ZR and this capacitance has an impedance of ZC. And let's do this operation in the frequency domain. So this is just a basic voltage divider circuit. The impedance of the capacitor is one over J omega C. The impedance of the resistor is simply R. And we've got the impedance of the capacitor again. And if we're doing this in the frequency domain, we can combine J omega to give us S. And then simplify this with a little bit of algebra. And we get an equation that looks like this. And if you'll remember, that term there is the cutoff frequency of the amplifier. So we get an equation that looks like that. And rewriting it to make it look a little bit nicer here. In the frequency domain, the response of this filter looks like this. Here's the passband. Here's the cutoff frequency about there. And then the magnitude here decreases at a rate of 20 decibels per decade. So basically what that means is every decade change in frequency, the output voltage, the magnitude of the output voltage will drop by 20 dB. And since this is a passive filter, we're starting with a gain of one and then decreasing from there. So this is a single pole low pass filter, a passive filter, and a single pole amplifier circuit has a relationship between V out and V in that looks almost the exact same right here. And since this is an op amp, this Vn is equal to the voltage at the non-inverting input minus the voltage at the inverting input. So this looks almost the exact same except for this AVOL term there. So that open loop voltage gain of the circuit. That's the DC gain constant that's going to be included in this equation and is a big number anywhere from the tens of thousands to the tens of millions. So basically an open loop op amp is like a low pass filter but with a large gain. And so the frequency domain plot would look something like this. Here's the passband part again, where we've got the flat gain, but you'll notice that the output starts at 120 dB for this particular op amp. There's the cutoff frequency, and then the response falls at a rate of 20 decibels per decade. So comparing the two side by side, here's the RC low pass filter compared beside the open loop op amp. Very similar expressions except for the AVOL term here. And also remember this VN is the difference between the VN plus and the VN minus. They have the same basic shape, except for the op amp in the passband has a much bigger value at 120 decibels versus zero decibels. And for the open loop op amp, the cutoff frequency is very low. This one is at about 10 Hertz. And that's typically the order of the cutoff frequency for an open loop op amp, 10 Hertz or tens of Hertz. In the open loop configuration, the gain is not well controlled. It is only constant for a small range of frequencies. And on top of that, the AVOL value can range widely, even for the same device. But by adding feedback, like with an inverting or a non-inverting configuration, we know that we can get control over the gain. And as we'll see, control over the frequency response as well. And we'll see in a minute where these values come into play. Before getting into specific op-amp configurations, let's take a look at this general control system block diagram that has a basic negative feedback loop here. So we have the input voltage over here. We have the output voltage over here. There's the open loop gain of the op-amp. And then we have this feedback element that's getting multiplied by this value of beta. And beta for an op-amp circuit, like the inverting or non-inverting configuration, is dependent on the components in that feedback network. 
right? For the inverting amplifier, we know that the gain is negative R2 over R1. Well, that value is, is one over beta. And for the non-inverting configuration, it's one plus feedback resistor over that ground resistor. And again, that value there would be one over beta for that particular kind of circuit. So now let's see how this feedback mathematically affects the relationship between the output voltage and the input voltage. So that closed loop output voltage is equal to, well, let's go back to the beginning, V in minus that closed loop voltage times beta. And then that gets multiplied by the open loop voltage gain of the op amp. And the S is here to indicate that this is a value that changes with frequencies. In fact, it's that value that we derived a little bit earlier in the video. So now with a little bit of algebra, I can rearrange this equation to figure out what the equation for the output closed loop voltage over the input voltage is. And remember this value right there is equal to the open loop gain times the corner frequency over S plus the corner frequency. So if we plug this number into the equation and then just do a little bit of algebra again, now one more step with a little bit of math and magic. we get this special term of one plus AOL beta that is decreasing the open loop gain by that factor, but increasing the cutoff frequency by that factor. So in the frequency domain, if the open loop frequency response looks like this, then the closed loop frequency response looks like this. We've got the blue line is the open loop gain, the red line is the closed loop gain. Now notice how the closed loop gain comes right into the open loop gain at the corner frequency of the closed loop gain. And then from that point on, the two circuits have the same frequency response. This difference in gain is called the loop gain. And this point right here, that's that omega C of the open loop response times one plus the open loop gain times beta, that feedback factor of the closed loop circuit. So the big takeaway in the closed loop equation, and I'm repeating myself here, is that the gain has been decreased by this factor of one plus AVOL times beta, but the corner frequency, the cutoff frequency, has been increased by that same factor. Another thing to point out if we look at this part of the equation, if AVOL times beta is a lot bigger than one, then this equation simply becomes AVOL over AVOL times beta which is simply equal to one over beta. So this term becomes a one over beta. And ultimately for frequencies less than the cutoff frequency of the closed loop circuit, frequencies less than this value, the output voltage will be approximately equal to one over beta times the input voltage. And so going back to the inverting and non-inverting amplifiers, that one over beta term is one plus R2 over R1 for the non-inverting amplifier and negative R of B over RI for the inverting amplifier. Okay, let's do a quick example comparing an open loop and a closed loop gain circuit. So let's say in this open loop circuit, that open loop gain is a million, which is the same as 120 dB. And let's say that the cutoff frequency is 10 Hertz. Remember, they're very low. Cutoff frequencies are very low for these open loop op amps. And over on the closed loop inverting amplifier, let's say this feedback resistor is 10 kilo ohms. And this input resistor is 1 kilo ohm. This means that this closed loop gain is 10 or minus 10, magnitude of 10, which is the same as 20 dB. And here is the open loop frequency response. And you can see here the pass band at 120 dB, the corner frequency at 10 hertz, and then the 20 decibel per decade drop as frequency increases. And here is the closed loop frequency response superimposed on top of the open loop. And you can see that the gain in the passband is 100 dB less than the open loop gain, 
which makes sense since the gain of the closed loop amplifier is a million divided by 10 or 100,000 times less than the gain of the open loop circuit. So that's an important number. That's how much the gain is decreased. That's a factor by how much the gain is decreased. And now let's take a look at the new corner frequency up here. That corner frequency is at one megahertz, which is 100,000 times higher than the 10 hertz corner frequency of the open loop circuit. And that's exactly what we expect. If your closed loop circuit dials down the gain by a particular factor, then the corner frequency will be increased by the same factor. Of course, this is ignoring a lot of effects in the circuit, like parasitic capacitances, but it's a good approximation, and it's a much better approximation than assuming that the gain of the closed loop circuit is constant over the infinite bandwidth. I hope you now have a good understanding of this relationship between open loop and closed loop gain amplifiers. Your patience and tenacity to stick it out to the end is a good indication that you are going to go far in your studies. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.